since it's almost the holidays with a holiday theme here. And really what I'm trying to do is show like the power of Dataverse for teams. So I wanna show the three main components. So I'm gonna show a power app for a secret Santa giveaway contest. And I'm going to show the back end of how there's a Power Automate flow that's going to send notifications via Teams to the users to let them know who they've been matched with. And then also just for a little extra piece of functionality of this, we have a Power Virtual Agent Bot that's going to, you're going to be able to talk to and get gift ideas for the person that you're matched with. So kind of showing all of the pieces of the stack. So crossing my fingers that the, the demo gods are in my favor today since this is a live demo. So first of all, I thought I'd do a very quick overview of like how do you even start building, say, Power Apps within this? So there is, like Wes mentioned, a new Power Apps application specifically for Teams. So you would go and click on that there in the left rail, and that will open a fully baked Power Apps editor just for building these Dataverse for Teams applications. So if we go to the Build tab, you can see that these environments get created per team that you associate it with. So I've created a team here called Secret Santa. So if I click on that, I can see on this Built by this Team tab, everything that I've built related to this Secret Santa solution that I've built. So I can see I have a Secret Santa Canvas app. I have that Power Virtual Agent gift idea flow. I have my chat bot. And then here are my tables. So that's the data source. Now, one of the biggest benefits of Dataverse for Teams is the fact that we can leverage the true relational database and all of the benefits we get with the Dataverse um, for Teams system. So I can see I have three tables. So it's a really simple solution here. So I have my events in a table. And one of the things I love about this is the editor is really kind of modern SharePoint-esque. So we can see you know, the, the entities and the columns and relationships and views. But if we click Edit Data, I can see all of my data in here for the events that I currently have. And it looks, you know, we can edit it in line. So that's, that's the power and the benefit of that. Now let's just walk through the solution. So you can see that I was able to deploy this actually here in the left rail. So I have a secret Sienna application that's going to load. Um, just show some visuals, like you can move stuff. So Sienna's ice skating around here. And then that's going to take us to the management screen. So main things we're trying to accomplish here is listing the events that you can be a part of. Because really what I'm trying to do with this is have it as a one-stop shop to where for different groups or people, um, organizations within your business, you can have different gift exchange or secret Santa events. So you can join different ones and they'll show up here in your My Events. You can see things like when the event's going to be, what the budget is for the gift, and if the matches have been drawn yet. And then we can see the different events that we could join. We get a Teams-esque experience here where we can see, well, who's currently participating in this event? So I can see if um, it's something I want to join, um, hover over that, I can see their names. So like Bob's participating here on the HR department gift exchange, and I can go in and join. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to switch over here to the preview, and we'll just walk through a scenario. So say I want to join the IT department Secret Santa. I can go and click our Join button. It'll take me to the screen where I can sign up. It's going to pre-fill some information. So I'll just put in an address, and I'll put in some things I like. So this is kind of what's going to power that engine in the back end. We can give GIF suggestions. So I'm going to say I like singing, right? So on the left, you'll see we have some details about this again, so I can know what the budget is, so I know what to expect, the max participants, when the deadline to sign up is. So, you know, we'll kind of restrict what's shown here if it's past the deadline to sign up, and some details. So I'm just going to click this checkbox, and that's going to register me. I'll see a confirmation that I'm all set and know when we're going to get the match results. So now I'm going to go home. So now that's going to show up here on my My Events section. Now I'm both participating in the HR and the IT gift exchanges. Now, how do we actually draw the matches and get that notification? So to do that, we're going to go here to Manage Events. And I'm going to click on, say we'll do this IT one. And we'll just put this in edit mode. And I'm just going to select this Draw Names button. So this is going to, in the background, do some fairly complex logic to loop through everyone that said they want to participate in this and match them up. So it's doing things like making sure that you're not matched up to yourself, right? So that's going to load. That's running in the background. Now I should get a notification. You see something popped up here in the chat. So I'm going to click on my chat message. And we see I have 
an adaptive card from the Flowbot. So this is happening behind the scenes. I get a notification that for the IT department Secret Santa, I've been matched with Henrietta Mueller. I can see her contact information so I know who to send my gift to. And I'm even getting um, a link to some gift ideas to a, a Power Virtual Agent bot so I can get the gift ideas. So let's see how the interaction with the bot works. So I'm going to click here on the left rail and I see I have this secret Santa gift helper. First thing I'm going to do, I want to make sure I'm spelling her name right because I'll need that for my bot. So let me just copy her name there. And we will go over here back to my bot. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to ask my bot, say I want gift ideas. Okay, my bot's going to call, it's going to respond to me, and this is all built with Dataverse for Teams and PVA, low code, no code needed. So it's going to ask me, well, who's this for? Who are you trying to get gift ideas for? So I'll type in Henrietta's name. It's going to call back and it's going to look at that Dataverse for Teams tables that I have, and it's going to return um, the keywords. So what we've said that we like when we register for this and return a link to shop for that in Amazon. And actually, I think I forgot to put what Henrietta likes. So let me try someone else. I'm pretty sure Bob is in there as well. And I did fill out a like for him. So we're going to do a search for Bob. There we go. And I'll just copy that Amazon shopping URL. And I'm going to get some instant gift ideas for Bob. I know he likes guitar a lot, so I can pick out some nice accessories for him. So kind of a fully functioning, fully baked solution that we have here using Power Apps, Power Automate, Power Virtual Agents, all within Microsoft Dataverse for Teams. Now we'll take a look at some of the back end and kind of what's going on here, um, some of the, the logic that we see. A lot of this is in the draw names button. So this is where some of that complex, like how are we deciding, for example, just to get unique people and assign those. So if I expand out our formula bar here, we can kind of see how complex and you know some of the stuff that we can do um, within Power Apps that looks almost like full code-esque. The first thing I'm doing is I'm using a for all, which is a way to do a loop like we would in traditional code. So I have a collection of the people that have signed up, a local collection, for this particular event. So I'm going to loop through those, and I'm going to put that out using the collect function to another collection to pair them up. So um, one of the things how I'm doing this is getting the unique receiver. So I have you know, a database in the background. If we kind of pop back over to this real quick, I'll show you the, how that works. We have those three tables, if you recall. So I'll go back here in the built by this team. We see we had events. So those are the events that show we have participants. So this is where when you click that join button, it's going to get outputted here to this participants list or table within Dataverse for Teams. So I can see there's everyone that signed up, their uh, mailing address, and then that's the like information. Now I have another table for pairs. So this is where I'm going to click that button that I was just showing in Power Apps and it's going to match people up. So when I ran that before, you see that it took everyone that participated, it has a giver column, so that's the person that will be giving their gift, and then it has a receiver, so it paired them up. So we each have someone to give a present to and someone to receive one. So that's what's happening in the background here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to filter the gallery of people that have signed up for this, right, the collection there, and I'm going to say where the receiver's name is not equal to the giver's name, so I can make sure I'm not matching someone up with themselves. We have another function here that's available in Power Apps called Shuffle. So we want this to be random. So Shuffle is going to allow us to pass it in a data source, and it's going to randomly kind of mix up the order of that. So I can combine that with our first to get one unique person as the receiver from that particular list. So that's going to add that into a local collection for me and match those up. Now what I want to do is I'm actually passing in Power Automate this data of the pairs to Power Automate. To do that, I need to convert this to JSON because I'm going to pass a JSON object to Power Automate so that it can go and loop through that and notify the people via chat like you just saw. So I'm going to create a collection based off of this called collection JSON pairs and format the values as a JSON object. So you see I have my squiggly bracket here. I'm just mapping up the values with data that I need to pass to Power Automate. 
Uh, then how this is working, I'm removing as I match someone up in that collection, I'm removing them so they can't be picked again from the collection. Now I'm doing one more for all where I'm going to patch to that Dataverse for Teams table of pairs, the data that was in the collection of the values and the matches. Now here's where we're actually going to go and call that flow. That's going to notify the users of who they've been matched with in Teams. So I have a flow called Secret Santa Pair Notification. So I'm going to do a dot run, and I'm going to pass in JSON using the JSON function in Power Apps. I'm going to take that collection and just pass it as a JSON format of compact. So now the flow can kick off and kind of get started with that. And we can take a quick look as well at this flow here. So I'm going to go to Power Automate, and we will edit this. Okay. So now that this is being passed over as JSON to this, so what this is going to do, the trigger is going to be for Power Apps. So I'm executing this particular flow from Power Apps itself. And it'll load up. There we go. So I'm going to put in that JSON input into a compose. And then I'm going to parse that JSON. So with the parse action, we can pass it in an input and we can generate from a sample. So I just kind of put a sample of what my JSON block will look like from the Power App. And now I'm just going to loop through that. So I'm going to loop through all of the results from this JSON. And we're using the post a message as the flow bot to a user action with inside of Power Automate to take whoever the giver's name is within this loop. And then we're going to give them some information about who they've been matched with and their email address and address. So it's really as simple as that. That's what's going on there. We'll go back to the app and look at that draw names. Um, so that's pretty much it. It's calling the flow and clearing out some values. So that's probably the most complex logic of the entire application that you're seeing here. Yeah, so I mean, that's pretty much all that I had for, for the demo. Um, hopefully, you know, it kind of showed you how all these different pieces and Dataverse for Teams can mix and match together and give you some ideas of, of how you can use that. And, and one of the cool things too is, as Wes was saying before, these are kind of responsive out of the box. So I can see um, I have it here taking up the full real estate of the screen, but I can go say have this also embedded as a tab within a team. So I have my secret Santa team and the general channel. And I have the same app embedded here where it's taking up slightly less real estate and it still responds and works correctly. All right, so I guess I'll give it back to you, June. So I don't know if we have any questions or anything, but that's really all that I, I had to show with that demo. Wow, this is really freaking awesome. Thank you, thank you, <laughs> April. And you know, I think I heard you're gonna be uploading this pretty shortly, right? Yeah, um, so yeah, I, I wanna, this is one of the things I wanna put in that sample, the repo that, that Bob was showing. Yep. There you go, yeah. So I, if if folks on the call are anything like me, you know, I'm procrastinating on all my Secret Santa stuff and like setting up those events. So, you know, you can always go to April sample and that'll help speed up, you know, your Secret Santa planning. Hi, first of all, thank you. Um, April, thank you very much. You're doing all the women here proud. Uh, my question would be, it was heavily based on Power Apps, actually. I'm finding it really easy to find very simple examples of how it works and very difficult ones, but nothing is good enough for intermediate. Do you have any recommendations where it explains a bit in more detail the, the functions and everything that you used in there uh, native to, to Power Apps, actually, where I can work on this on, on, from an intermediate kind of standpoint? Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. Anna. Um, yeah, good question. Um, you know, there's lots of obviously the learn documentation kind of walks you through a lot of that. You know, a lot of the the hard stuff is just knowing what formulas are there and when to use them. There's a great resource on docs.microsoft.com that lists every single formula that you could possibly use in Power Apps and um, you know, explains it at, at a high level and some shows you some samples of how it's used. So to me, like that would be a good, you know. The step for the intermediate level is to really get a good feel for the formulas and what's available and like when to use collections and all that. So, um, and then also the power users community, if you're wanting more like app samples themselves, if you go to powerusers.microsoft.com and the power apps forum, people post in the community, all kinds of app samples that you can look from and kind of all from like easy ones to hard to the, the middle of the line type functionality. So you can install in yours and kind of see what they're doing and, um, you know, learn from that. So hopefully that's helpful. Yeah, it is. Thank you very much.
We have another hand raised. Hello, everyone. My apologies as I arrived late if this was already answered. What specific licensing levels for 365 is Dataverse for Teams included on? It's included in your team's licensing. So, um, you know, mo I, say, I always say most of your team's licensing. So I, I don't know if the, F, the, like the first line workers that includes teams, but like your E3s, your business premiums, things like that includes it. Now, that when we say includes it, that means you can, you know, leverage the, the database, you know, so like the Dataverse for Teams database and all that. But you still, if you're in, in Azure API management, but if you're still wanting to do some other things that would be considered premium, like, um, like a, a custom connector, like, you know, those premium connectors that will mm -hmm. still require an additional license. But just to use, you know, like the Dataverse for Teams database, you don't have to pay additional licensing. It's included in your team's licensing. Okay, so that's included in the G3 licensing for GCC then? I believe so, yes. Okay, thank you. Awesome. Well, it looks like we got some more hands raised. Uh, you know, I'm preparing myself for an uh, exam regarding Power Platform, and I found uh, uh, there a lot of, uh, or at least uh, one uh, big uh, topic about uh, assigning roles to the CDS, Common Data Service, or now it is called Universe. And uh, is it still valid in a Teams environment uh, or uh, can we just skip it and we shouldn't worry about uh, assigning roles and uh, all those uh, security things? Uh, well, it's different in the Teams environment for Dataverse uh, for Teams because it's going to leverage natively like your Teams permission group. So we have our owners, our members, and guests. So uh, it kind of out of the box will take whoever is in the team that you're deploying the app to and leverage that. Now you can do some more granular role stuff still. So I think it still applies in, you know, in some ways to Dataverse routines, especially if, you know, that, that's good concepts to know, um, especially if you want to like move it off, offload it to the full-fledged version of Dataverse as well. Okay, thank you. There was also a question in the chat. Um, when a new Power App is created, we move it from default environment to the production environment once ready to share. Should we also be moving the associated flows to a production environment or will leaving those in the default be okay? I, I would package everything. I would use the solutions mechanism, which allows you to create a package of everything included in the solution. So if that includes flows, if it includes PVA, package that all up together and move it you know, from your different dev, test, prod environments as one package, just for, you know, ALM and keeping it all, you know, um, separate would be the best practice in, in my opinion. Awesome. So thank you, April, so much. Mm -hmm.